Welcome to the Financial Knowledge Network Money Smart Learning Series, Lesson Number 5, Pay Yourself First. In this tutorial, we will introduce you to the concept of how to create a savings plan and show you some ways to create savings options for yourself. We will show you why it's important to save, help you determine your goals for saving, identify savings options, and determine which options make the most sense for you. Saving Tips 1. Consider needs versus wants. Think about the items you purchase on a regular basis. These add up. Where can you save? Do you eat out at restaurants a lot? Can you cut back on daily expenses, such as coffee, candy, soda, or cigarettes? Do you have services you don't really need, such as cable television or a cell phone? 2. Use direct deposit or automatic transfer to savings to create additional savings. There are a couple of different ways you can do this. When you get paid, put a portion in savings through direct deposit or automatic transfer. If you have a checking account, you may sign up to have money moved into your savings account every month. What you don't see, you don't miss. You may purchase U.S. savings bonds through payroll deduction. 3. Pay your bills on time. This will save you the added expense of late fees, extra finance charges, disconnection fees for utilities such as phone or electricity, fees to reestablish connection if your service is disconnected, the cost of eviction, repossession, and bill collectors. 4. If you use check cashing stores regularly, you might pay $3 to $5 for each check you cash. This can easily add up to several hundred dollars in fees every year. Consider opening a checking account at a bank or credit union. 5. If you would like more information about checking accounts, you can find all that information in Money Smart Lesson Number 3. Check it out. 6. If you get a raise or bonus from your employer, save that extra money. 7. If you have paid off a loan, keep making the monthly payments to yourself. You can save or invest the money for your future goals. 8. If you receive cash as a gift, save at least part of it. Number 9. Avoid debt that does not help build long-term financial security. For example, avoid borrowing money for things that do not provide financial benefits or that do not last as long as the loan. Examples include a vacation, clothing, and dinners out in restaurants. Examples of debt that help build long-term financial security include paying for college education for you or your child, buying or remodeling a house, buying a car to get to work, Number 9. Save your change at the end of the day. Take that change and deposit it into the bank every week or month. Number 10. When you get a tax refund, save as much of it as possible. Number 11. If your work offers a retirement plan, such as a 401k or 403b plan that deducts money from your paycheck, join it. Most employers will match up to 50 cents on each dollar you contribute. The matched amount is free money. Number 12. If you decide to make investments, do your homework. Know what you are investing in. Get professional advice if you need it. You should have enough money in savings to pay for two to six months of expenses in case of emergency. Make sure you have an emergency savings account before considering investing in non-deposit products. Number 13. If you own stocks, reinvest the dividends to purchase more stocks. Some companies offer an easy way to do this called a Dividend Reinvestment Program, a DRIP. This process increases your investment faster, similar to compounding. 14. If you are interested in learning about investing, consider joining an investment club. Investment clubs are groups of people who work together to understand the process and value of investing even small amounts of money, as little as 5 to $10. Interest rates will vary depending on the type of investment vehicle you are putting money into. It pays to understand the differences between types of interest, annual versus daily compounding of interest. The more frequently interest compounds, the faster it grows. Start with $1,000 at 5% compounded annually. At the end of the first day, you still have $1,000. At the end of the year, you will have $1,050, which is $50 or 5% of $1,000 added to the original deposit as interest. Now start with $1,000 at 5% compounded daily. At the end of the first day, you will have $1,014. 
On the second day, add the interest earned, 14 cents, and compound the total amount, $1,000.14. At the end of the year, you will have $1,051.27, compounding each day's interest rate added to $1,000. Daily compounding will accumulate wealth faster than annual compounding. Let's compare the value of compounding interest over time. If you have $1,000 and you put it under your mattress, in five years you still have $1,000. In ten years, you still have $1,000. If you invest $1,000 in annual compounding at 5% interest, in five years you will have $1,276. And in ten years you will have $1,629. If you invest $1,000 in monthly compounding at 5% interest, in 5 years you will have $1,283, and in 10 years you will have $1,647. If you invest $1,000 in daily compounding at 5% interest, in 5 years you will have $1,284, and in 10 years you will have $1,649. So you can see that even 14 cents will add up over time. This chart illustrates what happens to your money if you invest $1 every day with 5% daily compounding. You can see that over time, the value of interest can have a huge impact on the accumulation of wealth. You can see that as the years go by, the accumulation factor goes up dramatically. This is the power of compounding interest at work. Eventually, you are making more money off the interest than you are on the original investment. This chart illustrates what happens to your money if you invest $5 every day with 5% daily compounding. As you can see, you can accumulate a tremendous amount of money with even a minor investment such as $5. This not only illustrates the value of compounding interest, but also the amount of wealth accumulation you can expect if you start saving early enough. To understand interest and interest rates, you must understand the annual percentage yield, or APY. This is the critical number in determining the value of an investment. The more often your money compounds, the higher the APY, and the more interest you will receive. When considering accounts for investment, compare the APY of the accounts and not the interest rate. This will help you determine the best investment vehicle to gain the highest rate of return. Another key measurement to use is to apply the rule of 72. This is the amount of time it will take your investment to double in value. You will find calculators in our site that will help you make these calculations. You can also figure out what interest rate you will need to double your money in a set number of years. These are valuable tools to help you in your investments and savings activities. There are generally two types of accounts you can create for investment. You can open a savings account or you can buy an investment. There are several types of savings accounts you can open, depending on your needs. Savings accounts allow you to earn interest give you easy access, and are federally insured by the FDIC. There are typically four different types of savings accounts you can open. These are Statement Savings Account, Club Account, Money Market Account, and Certificate of Deposit. Statement Savings Accounts are the most popular form of savings account. You can make deposits and withdrawals whenever you like, and you get a monthly statement showing your balance and interest earned. A club account is a special type of account you join to save money for a special reason, such as a holiday, family vacation, or college. These accounts usually require you to make regular deposits. A money market account usually pays a higher rate of interest and usually requires a higher minimum balance to earn interest than a regular savings account. This account pays a higher rate of interest for higher balances. It does not have a fixed term. You can make deposits and withdrawals. A certificate of deposit is an account in which you leave your money for a set period of time, such as six months or one, two, or five years. This period of time is called a term. You cannot make deposits or withdrawals during this term. You usually earn a higher rate of interest than with a regular savings account. The longer you promise to keep your money in the account, the higher the interest rate. You will have to pay a fee if you withdraw your money before the term has ended. Now we will explain some other specialized types of accounts, such as individual development accounts. What is an individual development account? Individual development accounts, IDAs, are matched savings accounts. When an account is matched, it means another organization, 
such as a foundation, corporation, or government entity, agrees to add money to your account to match the money you save in it. Why would an organization do that? Organizations will match the money people save in IDAs to encourage low-income families to save money on a regular basis. IDAs are based on the concept that asset building is necessary to break the cycle of poverty and to help families become financially independent. Asset building refers to people purchasing or holding items that will help them financially in the future. Organizations involved in IDA programs want to help low-income families achieve self-sufficiency. What can I use IDAs for? If you open an IDA, the money must be used for a specific purpose. Allowable purposes may include job training, college education, small business startup, down payment for a home. There are a few programs that allow you to save for other purposes. However, most programs will only offer accounts for the purposes listed above because they are likely to increase your future financial security. How do IDAs work? Each IDA program is a little different, so you must ask the person who runs the program in your area about the details. However, all IDA programs have many similar features. IDA programs are generally run by local community-based organizations. They help to recruit eligible people into the program and usually organize the required training sessions for the participants. Most IDA programs require that the participants take a certain number of financial education courses. Your reward for saving is the education you receive throughout the program and the money that gets added to your account at the end of the program. If you are interested, you can check out the following websites to search for programs by state. www.gwbweb.wustl.edu backslash users backslash CSD backslash IDA backslash IDA backslash HTML and www.idanetwork.org. Ask local community action agencies, other community groups, and bankers if they know of any programs in the area. Electronic Transfer Account or ETA. What is an electronic transfer account? An ETA is a low-cost savings account that provides federal payment recipients with the opportunity to receive their federal payments through direct deposit. The ETA is offered only through federally insured banks, thrifts, and credit unions. Who is qualified to open an ETA? Anyone who receives any of the following federal payments can take advantage of an ETA. Social Security, Supplemental Security Income, SSI, Veterans Benefits, Federal Employee Salary or Retirement, and Railroad Retirement Payments. How does an ETA work? The ETA is a voluntary program for both the consumer and the financial institution. Banks, thrifts, and credit unions that partner with the U.S. Treasury to provide the ETA offer an account that features a monthly fee of $3 or less, at least four cash withdrawals and four balance inquiries per month at no additional charge. No minimum balance, except as required by state law. Online point-of-sale transactions in the institution's network, for example, U.S. post office branches and grocery stores. Monthly statements. The same consumer protections as other account holders. Some banks offer more or better services for their ETA program than these minimum requirements. For example, some financial institutions might give you the option to deposit other types of payments into the ETA account. Some institutions may also pay interest. How can I open an ETA? You can find participating financial institutions in your area by accessing the website www.eta-find.gov or calling 1-888-382-3311. Participating banks and credit unions cannot refuse to open an account regardless of your credit history unless you have previously held an ETA that was closed because of fraud. 529 College Savings Plan Why is it important to save for college? According to U.S. Census Bureau statistics, people with a college degree earn over 62% more on average than those with only a high school diploma. Over a lifetime, that is more than a $1 million gap in earning potential. It is wise to consider getting an education beyond high school. What is a 529 plan? 
A 529 plan is an education saving plan operated by a state or educational institution. It's designed to help families set aside funds to pay for future college costs. There are two kinds of plans, prepaid tuition and savings. Every state offers at least one kind of 529 plan. 529 Prepaid Tuition Plan The states offer prepaid tuition contracts covering in-state tuition. If you want to study in a private or out-of-state school, some plans allow you to transfer the value of the contract to that school, but you may not get the full value of your prepaid account. Check with your local plan administrator for details. Some higher education institutions also offer their own 529 prepaid programs that allow you to target your tuition prepayment to the sponsoring institution or group of institutions. 529 Savings Plan The full value of the account can be used at an accredited college or university in the United States and at some foreign institutions. See the plan administrator for a current list. Some institutions also offer prepaid savings plans. What are the advantages of 529 plans? Investment grows tax deferred and until 2010 distributions are federal tax free if they are for college costs of the beneficiary. After 2010 qualified distributions will be taxable to the beneficiary. The student will probably be in a lower tax bracket than you so he or she will pay less tax. The amount is under your control unlike the case of the custodial account under the Uniform Transfer to Minors Act. UTMA. Under UTMA, the child has control of the money when he or she reaches the legal age of 18. Plan assets are professionally managed either by the state's treasury office or by an outside investment firm hired as the program manager. Everyone is eligible. There are no income limitations or age restrictions. What are some ways to save for college? 1. Establish 529 plans to save for college. Tax deferred. 2. Buy U.S. savings bonds to save for college. This is easy through automatic payroll deductions and earnings may be tax exempt if qualified. 3. Reduce college costs by completing college work during summer terms at a school close to home, provided the credits will transfer. 4. Take some transferable credits when in high school by attending advanced placement courses in the senior year or taking a college level examination program exam, a CLEP exam. 5. Consider studying in-state and community college from home to lower tuition and room and board costs. 6. Buy used books and reduce the use of supplies. 7. Learn to cook and do laundry to reduce the cost of living while boarding. 8. Plan ahead for trips between school and home on the holidays and school breaks. Catch Super Saver deals. 9. Look for need-based and academic achievement-based scholarships. 10. If you are interested in serving in the military, check out the ROTC office on campus for scholarship offers. 11. Apply for federal and private student loans. 12. Apply for home equity loans or get loans from parents or family. 13. Withdraw from IRA and Roth IRA accounts. Borrow against 401k plans, but be sure to talk to a tax advisor first. 14. Note that some IDA savings accounts can be used for college or higher education. Investment issues to consider when trying to make a decision about an investment. 1. Learn as much as you can about the investment from the prospectus, financial magazines, and the plan administrator. 2. Remember that past performance is not a guarantee of future performance. 3. Consider how long you plan to keep your money in the investment. If you invest over time, you are more able to ride out the ups and downs of the stock market. 4. Do not put all your eggs in one basket. You should have a mix of investment products that reflect your needs for return, safety, and long-term savings. 5. Your ideal composition of investment products will shift over time, so reevaluate what you have from time to time. 6. Determine how much risk you are willing to tolerate. Remember, there is a trade-off between risk and return. Before investing for retirement, ask your employer about any retirement accounts that are offered through your work. Learn more about investment options from your bank's customer service representative or a reputable financial advisor. Do not follow investment advice blindly. Do your own research. Read the prospectus of an investment product or instrument carefully.
Get more information from reliable sources. Use the public library for more resources. Do not invest in anything you do not fully understand. Remember, investments are not federally insured. You can lose the interest and the principal of your investment. And finally, ask yourself these questions when making any investment and savings decisions. How much do I want to accumulate over a certain period of time? How long can I leave my money invested? How do I feel about risking my money? What will I do now to save toward my goals? What will I do by the end of the month to save toward my goals? What will I do by the end of the year to save toward my goals?